hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run Kubernetes Pod Part 2. Now, first of all, if you notice something strange about my voice, well, yes, I'm under the weather. Um, I wanted to make this video and release it since Wednesday, but Wednesday, <laughs> but I was really sick. I'm still recovering, and so I had a choice to make today. I tried to record this video earlier today, and I had a serious case of e cup and coughing and so on, and I couldn't do it. I wanted to wait maybe to see if I'll feel better in another day, but um, I'm getting better, but I figured as soon as I could get us out. So there it is. So if you don't mind, please excuse me if I do cough or I get an e cup. Uh, as I said before, in an effort to get these videos out faster and make them a little bit shorter, um, I'm not doing a lot of editing. So it could be a lot of work for me to try and find every place that I cough or, you know, have a hiccup or something. So just fair warning. I'll try to do my best and I will try and keep it short. So with that said, let's jump in. So today, in the previous video, part one, we we're looking at how to create pods. And we said that a pod is essentially, when you have a Kubernetes cluster, a pod is an environment that manages containers, one or more containers. And so you can have many pods, and it doesn't matter what containers are running, they have the same type, um, the containers are running the same image as some other container, that's fine, because we know that containers already isolate the process that runs in them, so pods are just isolated the containers. So why might we want to do this? Well, we might want to have a group of containers that sort of run together. And we saw that when we use Docker Compose, we did that. Like for our stack, we had a Docker Compose file that started a number of pods together and sort of linked them and put them on its own network. So Docker Compose was doing sort of the same thing for us, isolating and running a group of pods that needs the containers that need to talk to each other. Kubernetes takes that same concept and call it a pod. Now, if you don't know, the whole Kubernetes thing, the mascot for or whatever for it, is symbolized well by you know shipping containers. You know, take this idea of how oh, shipping containers just have stuff inside of it. And when you put stuff in a container, it doesn't matter what's inside the container, it's just a fixed size and shape, and you can easily put it on a ship, a boat, a train, trucks, whatever. And that's all that matters. And so that's the idea with containers, is that once you have it wrapped up the things wrapped up in it nicely with the process and all the dependencies and requirement, you can just move it from environment to environment. So people have sort of use like a whale. If you look at the Docker logo, it's sort of like this whale and a container on its back, right? Shipping container sort of on its back. So what do you, when you have a set of whales in a group, you call them a pod. So <laughs> hence, um, this is called pods for a set of containers. Okay. Now, um, so what we saw before is using the run command, the kubectl run command, we could create one container per pod. We couldn't get more than one container inside of a pod very easily. And so that's what we're going to try and do today so we can fire up and get our stack to run in Kubernetes just as we did in um, Docker Compose. But before that, we have to even get our containers to run with our image. So that's going to be the first thing is trying to create a pod with our image, right? So a container running our image. So let's jump in. So here I am in um, my Kubernetes directory and we had um, part one, but there wasn't any code. Um, today we're gonna be, in terms of we didn't create any files or anything, everything was at the command line. Today we're gonna end up creating a file, like I said, because we need to run uh, multiple containers per part, but we'll see how we get there first. And so, I already started my mini cube cluster and my dashboard. And so again, the dashboard is just so I can see, um, show you some things that might be running and so on. And the, every, we don't need the dashboard for so anyone who's not running mini cube, don't worry. Um, you'll see, I can show you how to get the same information we'll get from the dashboard. Anyway, um, well, there's a directory I want to create this time and it's gonna be copying our Dockerizing part two, which is when we Dockerize our containers and created that Docker Compose file. And I'm going to copy that directory as pods part two, okay? Then I'm going to cd into the pods two directory and I'm gonna start off my VS code. Now, I really don't need everything that's in that directory. The only thing I wanted to reference, and I could have just simply opened 
the other directory side by side and look at it um, the only thing I need to reference is the docker compose file because um, just like how the docker compose file allows to create these services and you can see each service is really you know the service name as a key so Redis uh, or a server or a counter and or a polar um, Kubernetes has something similar but we're not gonna get there just yet so for now let's just I just want to prepare us by having this directory ready so let's now go back to the command line I'll clean this up a little bit and the first thing we did was we ran our Redis image and that was fairly easy to run in Kubernetes is qctl and it was run and then minus image and it was Redis and that's all we did and we ran it and oh the name is required so I guess minus my O um, name let's just call it Redis and we run it and so that created our pod and we can say kubectl get pods and that should show us our pod or we could come over here to the dashboard we should see our pod running and notice it's green it's up and it's running and that's very nice now the other thing that I showed you is how to find the command um, the command line the help so we can say q cube ctl um, help and pod um, run command sorry so or we could do run minus h and we can get um, help as you can see here are the examples and this is how you simply run um, thing which we did or we can do something with a port or environmental variable which we'll get to soon um, the other thing was finding the same help online by going to the kubernetes.io website document scrolling down to command line tool here and then over on the side um, we go kubectl commands and then the run command and then you can see the same help okay so let's now take a look at how to run our own pod so let me shift this over a little bit so i can get back to this and so the next part we'd like to run is our server our server the image now it's already built so remember we could see we can run docker compose build which would build our images but they're already built and so let's just copy this because this is the image we want to run now remember these images are local on our machine when we do redis or ubuntu or something it's pulling it from docker up and so you can imagine that when we told Kubernetes to run Redis, if it didn't have it already, it pulled it from Docker Hub. So let's see what's going to happen. And we could verify that we have our images already. We can do Docker image list and grep for, grep for Stripe Varsity. And so we see um, we have our Stripe Varsity using Kubernetes, Server, Polar, and Counter, and that's from a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so let's now try running kubectl run and we're going to say minus image equal and i'll paste this for striversity right using kubectl colon server 2 and then of course i have to give it a name so let's just find a server that's fine and i write and it says created so let's go back now to here and then go to our dashboard and notice it says fail so why did it fail well we can click here and we can see actually if we just go back you can see here image pull right this is what is failing you see fail to pull image data that are unknown description yada yada pull deny diversity it is trying to get this from docker that's why you see it says require docker login deny yada yada so it's really trying to get it from docker hub and that makes sense we tell it to grab this image and that's the only place it knows to pull it from now you might be thinking oh but it's local well no it hasn't been configured as you know to pull image locally okay and so we somehow have to either give it or tell it to get it locally now if you don't have the dashboard how would you know this so you can say cube ctl get pods and you'll see this image pull um, issue you can also say cube ctl and you should be able to get logs and you can say 
you want to get logs of the server and um, you can see that all is waiting to start the image can pull okay and so you see some of the same error message you could get a lot more detail but we'll leave it there for now and say that all, at least you see the error is pulling the image and so now you know totally can get it so okay so how do we resolve this issue if we do mini queue and we run the command we look we'll see there's a under image command you'll see it has this and it has image or manage an image there's also cache you know add delete or push image local uh, local image into minikube so that seems to be something that we should do we should use right local image or image is local into minikube so add delete or push so minikube cache cache add and if we look at this it says oh minikube cache will be deprecated in upcoming version please switch to minikube image load all right fine let's do minikube image load image and if we do that we should see oh we have build an image load it list image pull image push image remove image or save an image from minikube tag image or, or put tag images right so let's do list to see what's there and if we do image list we can see that all the kts images that it pulled to run kubernetes that's there and you know some docker um the redis one right it pulled from docker io but nothing about our striversity so let's load our image so it says load and let's run that and see so x didn't do to provide an image in your local daemon to list in community so we need to provide our image so and so i'm saying load this from local into minikube and so it's going to take a minute and there we go and so if i go back and i do this we'll see we should see here striversity so it makes it look like if it's in a docker io but at least when it tries to pull it now it's there and so we can go back and do q ctl run and if we try to recreate our server now actually we don't even it's already exists we don't even have to try to recreate it it should be green because it would have been trying trying and trying and it would eventually pull it successfully and as you can see it is running so that's good but what if you're at the command line and you don't have the dashboard so again you can do crew ctl logs and remember we said this and so if we look at the logs command minus h we can see that you can say log for um containers you can do minus f to follow like what we did with um docker logs command also at the minus s for, minus f for follow and docker um log command also have like you know from when and so on too but um this is basically enough for us to say minus f follow and you can give the pod or you know container and so we want the server pod and so if we do this um right now we're not seeing anything being locked so that's fine usually that container comes up and it doesn't lock too much what about our redis container so if you do kubectl and we do logs minus f and we do redis is that logging anything well it has something saying basically it's ready for connection okay so that's good uh, remember our server just comes up and listen um it only writes something of once um, somebody reads from it or sends it a message so with that let's try and start our um so let's say docker images diversity let's try starting our counter so we'll do if we get if we do kubectl run and we try to start our counter this is the thing that does the count and pulls them to the server and we call it counter um, uh, edit counter and we do that we should again see error messages let's see workload and we should see a fail again and it should have the image pull but we know how to fix that it should load it and then this should go green pretty soon it should be able to pull it when it tries again because it's going to keep trying and notice that it's running we don't have to restart it and so we can go ahead and load our polar image also because we know we're going to need that and we can do mini um, kubectl run polar and so that should be created 
and we shouldn't have any image pull issue and you can see it's already yellow instead of being red and it's going to be green and so good we have four pods running and they each have a container within them i know but they're not talking to each other i mean we can do q ctl logs minus f and we can do on our server right now we should see well actually everything's gonna be failing so the server is not gonna log anything but to our polar or counter sorry um polar two should fail so you should see that this is unable to post count to you know local host um, 8080 counter so it cannot reach the server and if we look at our polar it should be unable to reach the server also so it is logging so we can see log unable to reach um to get count all right and that's because like i said they're in different pods and there are ways to make pods um talk to each other but we're not going to do that remember we want to get all our container within the same pod why because we're going to use a pod as the manager for a set of containers that need to talk to each other run together be related and scale in the same way one reason that i told you that you should have this is that if you click on a let's click on a um, redis for example and we go up to the top here and we can see view logs we can see uh, execute in, into pods we don't want that and we could do edit resource so what's this edit resource if you click on it you will see it's all this yaml and json and without getting into much of it today we'll just have to trust me what we can see is that you can change this because it's always edited and you can say update and it gives you a hint at the bottom here that you can do kubectl apply minus f and then this whatever file you have that yaml to describe to you and so this is a hint of how you can create this resource from file you don't have to only use the um the run command and so there's a lot more information in here than we actually need and this is just represents the all the information about this part that is running right now um, not only information that was used to create it and so we're not going to use this i just wanted to show you for those of you who are on the command line um, this is how you would do it um, you would type kubectl get pods and we want the output to be in yaml and the part we're talking about is a server pod and so if you do that you'll see that oh, um, it spits out all this information um, and tell you the same thing api pod metadata all this other stuff the specs and all this other information that we saw on the dashboard all right so that's just to show you how you can get that information. We can redirect this to a file and then modify it, um, simplify it. But we will create this file from scratch, of course, not with all this and all this in it. So I'll show you the minimum amount of information you need. All right, so let's do that now. All right, so I'm gonna clean up. And now is where I'm going to jump over to this file. And I'm going to say, well, the first thing we wanna be able to do is create a redis image and let's see how we can create that from a file a yaml file for kubernetes without using the run command and so let's create a new file and i'll just call it redis at yaml you can spell it yaml or you could do yaml i'm not going to be consistent i'm just going to go back and forth depending on how i feel <laughs> um, and so now we can start typing some stuff that's going to look very similar to what we saw in the inspect there for the part resource details when we edit it but if you don't have it, what you can do is make sure that you install um, extension for Kubernetes, right? Um, if you, I'm assuming that all you're using um, VS Code like me, but any editor you should have this. And just um, I, the notice the one I have installed is by Microsoft Kubernetes, and then I have YAML language support from Red Hat. So now once you have that, and if I type pod, you will see it says here kubernetes pods and then just click on this and what it shows you is api version one i don't know if you remember the resource we looked at it just now the, if at port pod first and then api version after but it doesn't matter this is just a yaml file and in the next, very next video i'll go over yaml files json file and something else and i'll show you how you create yaml files we just sort of did it with 
Docker and we never really spend time, um, Docker Compose, we never really spend time examining what a YAML file really looks like, but we'll learn that in the next video. Okay, so just assume that you go along with me for now. And so we'll say version one, the kind of things that we've created is a pod. There's some metadata about the pod. So for now, we'll just give our pod the name, um, you know, my stack, or I think it's my stack we call it, or we could call it Triversity stack, all right? And then uh, method, the label, so that's the name for this pod, that's the metadata about this pod, and their labels, Kubernetes lets you label any resource with multiple layers, labels, sorry, <laughs> labels, um, and that's just key value pair. So name is one key and the value is this. And I can put any other label I, I like. I could say corporation or whatever. Um, and then I could say Shriversity or whatever. It's just a key value pair and so it's, it's labels. So it's any number of key value pairs, right? All right. <clears throat> and that just allow you to create a number of resources and if they share the same labels, you can find those all the resources that have the same labels. Remember, in Kubernetes Cluster, you might be managing hundreds or thousands even uh, of these resources, pods and services and other things that we're going to talk about later, later. And so being able to find them, you can just find them across labels, right? Like you could have something that's labeled a front end or back end or database or whatever. And then we can find all your databases regardless of which pods they're running in or whatever. All right. So we'll leave that as that. And then know the specification for this pod. Well. The specification part is the containers that it needs to run. Remember, you can put multiple containers in a pod. So we're just going to stick to one container for now. And so the name of this container is going to be Redis. And the image simply is going to be Redis. Okay, that's what we can pull it for as from um, Docker. This resource limit, we could take it out if we like, but for now, just leave it. It's not required, but it's going to complain and say, oh, hey, things can run over, consume too much resources. And this is the port that this container exposed. We don't really need it for our Redis, but let's just put it and it's 63, 79, 63, 79. And I know this because if we go back here, we can see that um, the Redis port that our server needs to connect to is 63, 79. And so that's all that we need for a, let me pull this down a little bit, to describe a pod in YAML file. So how do you get this pod created then? So you do kubectl, and remember that apply command. Apply is when you want to create something, and you can still use it the first time the thing doesn't exist, but generally you use create, you say minus s, f, and redis. And apply means that if it's not there, um, create it or modify it. Um, so you can do this if you change the image, Kubernetes is really smart. We're going to see a whole bunch of other things that it can do. But for now, let's just go with create. I will say create. And if I do kubectl get pods, because I'm going to do this for the people who are not running um, the dashboard. And you should see that oh, we have a pod, a pod called um, Striversity stack. It has one container in it, and the one container is up. OK? That's not what I mean. And it's up five seconds. And for those people who have the dashboard, if you go here, you're going to see that if you go back to workload, you should see that you have five things and it keeps Triversity stack here. And you have that Redis container in there. And that's running. OK. Um, <clears throat> now, these other pods are running by themselves. So how do we get rid of them? We know how to get rid of them. It's Q, CTL, delete. And we could delete pod and we could delete, you know, the server pod, right? And we could get rid of that guy. And we could get rid of the counter one. We could get rid of the polar. We could get rid of Redis, those standalone ones. And so we should now have the one and only um, Striversity pod running. And so if I click there, we can see that. Okay, let's go back here. Now, we already know how we can create um, a, not a um, pod. We can say file new. We can say, um, let's say count, um, server, our server, that YML. And we can say pod, and this is a Kubernetes pod. So we could go ahead and keep creating individual files 
but it's not going to get us where we want. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to create a file to run a pod. So let's just do where we stop fooling around and do what we came here to do. Are we going to call this my stack? This is the stack or Stripe or CC stack, whatever you want, but let's keep the name short. My stack that's Y A M L, and we want to create a pod, Kubernetes pod. We can call it my um, Stripe Varsity V I S I T Y stack. And then for the container here, um, this first container is going to be Redis. And and we want another one, right? So let's do this and pull this down. And now we're going to create another container. Of course, we um, this needs to be the bottom here. There's the funny thing about um, YAML files. So this needs to be lined up. This means this dash means that you're actually creating another record. It's a list. Um, and this is the object. We'll talk more about that later. Um, we can actually tap this in like this, and this is still going to be valid. But uh, make sure it's all, it starts with this dash to say, though, this is another object that starts off. There's another element in the list, and that object in this, this element has a name and blah, blah. So this is going to be um, server is the name. The image, oh, this is crazy scrolling, sorry. My mouse is a bit fast. Um, the image here is going to be our server image. Limit resource, we're going to leave all that stuff. The port that this exposes is 8080. I remember we want to be able to have um, this environmental variable. So I'll just cheat and copy this real quick. Go back here to our stack and stick it in there. Let me see if this works. So I have to tap it over a little bit. Okay. So at this point, now we have um, configured based on our Docker Compose file that our server needs to reach our Redis um, server. So we create an environmental variable saying, hey, um, server, this is the Redis URL. The question is, is it going to connect? Well, we have a couple ways we can look and see what is going on. So if we have a connection to the Redis um, server, we may not see any connection. So we might just have to go ahead and trust that, oh, maybe this is the way to do it and create our polar, our, our counter, which is gonna try and post to our server and then see if that fails. So let's just try it. So I'll do that. And so if we do this, that looks correct there. And so the only thing I have to do is change it from server to counter. And then instead of um, Redis API, um, Redis URL is API URL. And the way we did specify this was HTTP colon and server colon 8080 slash counter, right? And so this did not need to expose any port or counter didn't. And so the server exported port 880, and that's what the counter is going to try and reach. So now we should definitely be able to see the counter failing or succeeding to reach our server. And then at that point, if it is reaching our server, we should see if the server can reach Redis, because that's the only time the server actually locks something. So now let's do this. Let's um, do kubectl, and let's create. So we see it's already existing. Sorry. So let's delete it. So we can delete it this way too by specifying the file. That also deletes it. I'm going to clean up, run the create again, and so that creates successfully. And what I'm going to do is run um, log. So logs minus F. And this time I'm going to say um, follow the pod we want is my um, is diversity. That's the pod. And the container I'm looking at, well, let's just see what we can find. Oh, so we have to choose a container. So let's do minus C and we can choose the Redis one and we can see well, it doesn't look like if it says anything new from what we've seen before. What about our server? Nothing from the server. It's very quiet. What about the... So it tells me that all the counter is not posted into the server because every time you post the, counter, the server, it would say something. And sure enough, here we can see unable to post. 
to servo that 8080. Hmm, interesting. We tell you that Tawichi agrees to servo, but unlike Docker Compose, where the name of that container, its host name, is the name that you specify, that's not how it works in Kubernetes. And we'll get into that later. But what we can do is we can just drop this, because remember, by default, our um, server, our um, server will try to reach Redis on a local port with, with um, that 83, uh, 6370. And also our counter is going to treat and reach local host, um, you know, 8080, whatever, right? Like that's the default that we built into our code. So let's see if this works, because it seems like specifying the container name is not working. So then it can't possibly be that. So let's delete that again, clean up, and then we do kubectl create, and let's do this. And now let's do our log again, and let's log container, and notice our counter. Notice it says it's posted successfully. Now, if this is working, that means that our server should be saying that, oh, I am posting this, you see, so a successful count was posted. And so now we know that the counter is posted to the server, the server is getting that and say, resisting that, yeah, I got it. And I don't expect much from the Redis server other than maybe a connection was established, but it doesn't even see that. So Redis doesn't tell us anything. But at least we know that uh, we have a communication between the counter, the server, and Redis. So now we just need our polar. So let's just put that in and wrap this up. So there we go. And the pull this down to copy it. So I'm doing a alternate shift and down on my Mac keyboard, um, but that should also work on Windows. And so this needs to be changed to polar. And then again, we don't need to specify anything else. So it looks like Kubernetes in managing the containers in a pod, it makes them look like if they're running on the same server, like different processes on the same server and they can talk to each other. So let's now clean up. Let's do Q, CTL, delete. And we're going to do it minus F, uh, my stack. And then that's gone. We do Q, CTL, create, and then minus F, my stack, my stack. And so this should give us what we want. Q, CTL, get pods. We should see we have four pods. And if we now do logs and we do um, polar this time, we should see come from server is da da da. So our polar is getting a value from the server. And that tells us that well, we have everything running in Kubernetes, just as we did in Docker with Docker Compose, using Docker Compose. Um, now we can, of course, the format of the files are very different. Um, they're both YAML, but you know, um, the Docker Compose was a little bit more concise. Kubernetes one was a little bit more to it, but not a whole lot more. This is how you specify a container. Like I said, this resource part, you can actually take this out. It gives a little warning that oh, you can overuse resource, but doesn't mean that oh, it wouldn't work if you take it out. So, you know, in a way, the Kubernetes one is probably just as simple as the Docker Compose, because if you look at them, in Docker Compose, you just have the name of the service, image name of the service, image, and any environmental variable. You can say if it depends on something. And the Kubernetes one, you just have the name of the pod, the container, image, and any port, and same thing. And we didn't have to put in um, environmental variable because um, how Kubernetes sort of run them on the same, and I'm using air quote, like local host, and um, they can still talk to each other. And so we know that that is working. Now, I'll end it here, it's longer than 10 minutes, but um, hopefully you uh, you got this to run successfully. And that's it. Um, thanks for your time. Um, if you find this helpful or you like the material, leave a thumbs up, leave some comments. Um, let me know what you think um, about this new style of sort of, you know, just trying to cut the time down to about 10, 15 minutes and also not doing too much editing on it. Um, again, for even for my voice in the coffin, um, see you in the next video. Take care. If you're here and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing if you like the material. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. See you soon. Bye. Take care. Be safe.